I want to thank my distinguished colleague, Brother Amen. I rarely share the stage with a real lawyer, a real barrister. In my neighborhood, barrister is how you said bastard with a lisp. <laughs> <laughs> so good to see him here today. Does hip hop degrade society? People say that because, as my colleague said, it leads to crime. Do you know crime has declined dramatically in the last 20 years? Murders are down, assaults are down, robberies are down, rapes are down. There is no one-to-one -one correlation between a hip-hop lyric and a subsequent material condition that leads to criminality. That's a mythology. Now, what the criminologists tell us, there is a reason, there's a perceptual gap between what we think and what is the case. That's because of crime shows. It's not TI, it's CSI. Get it right. Then we talk about education. Education is in shambles, but not because of hip hop. Hip hop teaches a respect for rhetorical genius, for oratorical wizardry, for the invention of words. But material conditions lead us to budget shortfalls, which keep instruments out of schools. If we want young people to play instruments like Questlove, if we want young people to be able to engage in the most sophisticated classical extension of traditions that have been nurtured both within the heart of Africa and in the heart of Europe, then give them access to the money. Stop the budget shortfalls and give our children access. Also, of course, they talk about incarceration. Most young black and Latino men in America and unfortunately even in Europe, especially in the UK, are there for nonviolent drug offenses. It was not hip-hop that led them there. Before hip-hop was even invented, there was an over-incarceration of African-American and Latino men. It has only been exacerbated by repressive white supremacist practices of both Europe and America. <laughs> has hip-hop grown out of degradation? Of course it has. In the late 70s and in the early 80s with the rise of Reaganomics, Reaganeering, Reaganopia, as Charles Adams would say, there's been a destructive political concentration upon demonizing young black men and increasingly women. Those are state policies and public policies designed to corral young black people. Has hip hop sometimes glamorized and glorified that? Of course it has. But it is a complex culture which shows the ludicrous character of trying to assault an entire culture that produces both Jay-Z and Nas and Lauren Hill and Questlove, and Eminem. How can you assault a culture that is already critical about itself? How can you be against something that's against itself? It already encourages self-reflection, unlike my colleague who had nothing but self-righteous condescension pointing the finger at the other side. Hip hop says, as Lauren Hill said, even after all my logic and my theory, I had a motherfucker, so you ignorant niggas hear me. Jay-Z said, all my teachers couldn't reach me and my mama couldn't beat me hard enough to match the pain of my pop not seeing me. So, with that disdain in my membrane, get on my pimp game, fuck the world, my defense came. Self-criticism, looking at their own culture. Biggie said, back in the days, our parents used to take care of us. Look at them now, they're even fucking scared of us. So, there is self-criticism. And as I end, will you destroy an entire culture because of some problematic pathological expressions that are undeniably wrong? Misogyny, sexism, homophobia, they're all in the church. Are you gonna stop the church? Are you gonna get rid of the church? You're not gonna get out of the church, right? Finally, let me say this. My colleague says it appeals to the base element. It does. Base, how low can you go? Base. How low can you go? Base, how low can you go?